Fever and thermal regulation immunity, the immune system feels the heat. The fever response is executed as an integrated physiological and neurological circuitry and confers a survival benefit during infection. We discuss the emerging evidence that suggests that adrenergic signaling pathways and thermal regulation uh, shape the immune system. There is mounting evidence that increase of one to four degrees Celsius in core body temperature that occurs during fever is associated with improved survival and even further evidence of that beyond that. France warns against the use of anti-inflammatory drugs. More important information, like they're talking about ibuprofen and others. Even now this article came out um, saying the World Health Organization officially recommends avoiding taking ibuprofen for COVID-19 symptoms. But here we go, listen to this. The effect of antipyretic therapy upon the outcomes in critically ill patients, elderly patients, listen to this folks, aggressively treating fever in critically ill patients may lead to a higher rate of mortality. They had to stop after the interim analysis. In the middle of the analysis, they had to stop the study because so many more people had died if they were treated with antipyretics, fever reducing, paracetaminophen, acetaminophen, these drugs. The latest 2019 study on antipyretic fever reducing medications comes out and guess what it shows? There's contrasting results, but only two studies showed what they thought was improved survival with antipyretics administration. But that was a study evaluating head trauma, neurological problems, any type of um, administration of it. But in the fever group due to infectious disease, they saw opposite results where it was negative. So you have to read even the studies that they say. It again, you have to understand where it's applicable, where it's not applicable, and you have to break down that information. Results also demonstrated, they said that the major, that, but while several studies, so in essence, I haven't read the other one study. There's two studies that said improved survival, one of which was only improved survival in things that were non-infectious diseases. So you eliminate that one from this consideration when we're considering an infectious disease like COVID-19 or others. All right, and then you apply maybe one study showed improved survival, maybe one, but I haven't read that one yet, so I can't give you whether it was applicable to infectious disease or not. So they go on. Several studies demonstrate increased mortality risk associated with antipyretics, that's fever reducers, or demonstrate fever's benefit in infection. Fever has a benefit. In fact, they said the highest survival rates were in the highest fever. The people that had the strength in their physiological systems to mount the strongest immune response, a fever, had higher survival rates, folks. That's what the evidence on fever and its effect on risk of dying during infectious disease. But listen to this. The results also demonstrated that health professionals, health pompous windbags, continue. And I say that because this is ridiculous. Because even the American Academy of Pediatrics, I believe it was, don't quote me, it may have been, I think it was the AAP, um, Pediatric associations said, let kids' fevers write it out. Don't do anything. Don't treat it. But they actually said treat it if they feel bad. But then if you look at the studies on treating fevers and then asking the children whether they feel better, guess what? They didn't see improved quality of life in children and decreased pain and suffering. They actually saw prolonged infections in children given this. So professionals, health professionals, continue to view fever as deleterious. So they literally say again, after multiple times saying in the peer reviewed medical literature, medical literature, medical professionals should know this, right? Don't you agree? I, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't. But I can't recommend you not take it. They're drugs that they recommend. I can't recommend you not take the drug, but I can recommend that you learn more than what health professionals know. The scientific evidence time and time again says fevers improve survival. But health professionals, according to the latest studies on the effects of fever reducers, say it, the majority of evidence says it increases the death risk. And health professionals still think a fever is bad for you. So that basically proves health professionals aren't health professionals. And it proves that we need to get this type of information out to people. The evidence does not currently support routine administration, yet the article in the World Health Organization says, take paracetaminophen. <laughs>